This is Donald Parham. You're listening to Chargers Unleashed, part of the L.A. Football Network. Stay jiggy. And hey, this is Chris from the second Chargers outside linebacker. And make sure you check out Chargers Unleashed. Shout out to Chargers Unleashed. Sebastian Joseph, they know the vibes. We outside. Are you checking in with Mike Williams from the L.A. Chargers? And you're tuning in to Chargers Unleashed. You're listening to the Chargers Unleashed podcast with your host, Dan Wolkenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought to you by Bet Online, Charger Bolt Family, and Rock Solid Sports Memorabilia. If this is your first time tuning into the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Dan Wolkenstein, how are you, sir? I'm wonderful. The sun is not shining. It's a little gloomy. It's like we're living in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, great weekend. Um, we saw some interesting news over... Friday through Sunday with some transactions both in and outside of Chargers world. Uh, but hey, week two, Chargers free agency starting now. Late breaking news, which we'll get into here in a second. Chargers are not going to be resigning or signing Dalton Schultz. Uh, just signed with the Texans along with Montgomery, I believe, the running back also signed with them. But Jake, uh, were you overwhelmed or underwhelmed with the Chargers transactions last week? I wouldn't say I was either, actually. I thought, based off of what they had in cap space, we all had to feel realistic about that they could only do so much. They weren't going to be as big-time players as they were the, the year prior. And when you look at three of the biggest names that the Chargers wanted back, that you felt like they needed back, if you weren't able to get some of these guys back, that it was going to leave a huge void on your team, in the likes of Drew Tranquil, Trey Pipkins, and Morgan Fox, the Chargers were able to bring back two of them. And two of them on very, very reasonable deals compared to what the rest of the market was getting. And I know that there was a huge hubbub over the weekend regarding the Drew Tranquil uh, situation, and we'll get that get to that in a minute. But the Chargers were all, as far as free agent players are going to were concerned, outside of the Eric Kendricks and possible John Johnson signings, their priorities were a lot with their internal free agents and still you you could still end up bringing some back. Didn't even mention the Donald Parham situation. It's great to see him come back and again on another reasonable deal on there. JK Scott coming back. That was a necessity based on how he performed last year. But you look at this now and with the cap situation that the Chargers were in, your internal free agents were most likely going to be your main priority. And give it to the market because the market has actually been in the Chargers' favor to help bring them back. So you have to acknowledge that as well. But I was neither underwhelmed or overwhelmed. I thought that they they played the market well. I thought they have been fortunate to get certain guys back that we felt that their contract numbers and based off of their performance was going to be way out of what they were going to be able to afford. And the market broke in their favor and they took advantage of that. And you have to like, even if it's not from a big spending spree, you take in everything from the restructures to re-signing key players to reasonable deals that fit in your cap situation and still gives you still gives you uh, enough to bring in more. That this has been a, a very nice job done in the last week and a half by Ed McGuire and GM Tom Telesco. Hundred um. percent. I'll give my take on that, but before we get into that, Jake, over under. Uh, hmm. I'm over, interested. I'm interested to know what this question is today. Over or under uh, number of free agents brought in externally this week? We've missed <laughs> on a couple of them last week when we were saying over 0.5. Mm-hmm. So let's put it at 0.5 again. Well, it's Monday, so now we got five days to play with. Let's play the odds and let's say over. <laughs> Deal. Anyways, all right. Bet Online remains your best source for all the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends over at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports waging information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. 
So make sure you head on over to betonline.ag today to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the first deposit. Make sure to use that promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so let's start off with the bad news. Drew Tranquil is not going to be a Los Angeles Charger in 2024 or 2023. Well, I say 2020, well technically 2024 because the season goes into then and most likely the Chiefs are going to be playing in 2024 because they are defending Super Bowl champions. Uh, Drew Tranquil signs with the Kansas City Chiefs for a deal up to $5 million. A lot of drama this weekend with uh, quote-unquote sources from many folks, myself included. Um, And if we're being honest, these sources probably, most likely, 100%, come from both sides. Drew Tranquil did not resign with the Chargers, ends up signing with the Kansas City Chiefs. One side, i.e. the Chargers side, uh, again, not the Chargers specifically, but that camp with that image is saying they offered something. Tranquil said he wanted to go test the market. Tranquil went and test the market. Chargers said, all right, well, if you're going to go do that, then we're going to do our own thing. Went and got Eric Hendricks. The market dried up. Drew Tranquil came back. And the Chargers essentially were saying, the money we had for you before, no longer have because you paid Kendricks. Then Tranquil goes out and tries to find the best offer he can get. For whatever reason, goes the Chiefs. That's one side. Other side, uh, Drew Tranquil side uh, would say or has been on record now saying that they have not re- they did not receive a contract for the Chargers for Drew Tranquil. Chargers never offered them one. They never received one. Uh, Drew Tranquil wanted to be back. And when the Chargers didn't, they went out and got the best option they can get. Um, <laughs> now, there's a whole bunch of drama over the weekend about you know who's right, who's wrong, whose sources are correct, whose sources are incorrect, who has sources, who doesn't have sources. I, I can't speak for other people, but I can speak for myself and us. I know who I'm talking to, and I can vouch for my stuff. Uh In my eyes, Jake, this felt like, first off, this felt like one of those no one's happy in a divorce kind of thing. And it felt like both sides have sources from within who are trying to discuss what happened and are trying to get that out there and are trying to protect a narrative, optics, etc. That doesn't mean people are lying about sources. It just means people have sources from different camps. So... Honestly, at the end of the day, it's kind of he said, she said bullshit. And unless you hear it from Drew or unless you hear it from Telesco, it doesn't really matter. Like at the end of the day, he's a chief. Kendricks is the charger. I think we should focus on Eric Kendricks. Maybe we'll find out. The agent, I believe, for Drew Tranquil quote tweeted me and said like, oh, know your facts before you tweet. I have put out a tweet asking him to confirm personally crickets. We'll find out. Um, I know what I've been told. So overall thoughts generally on that, like, does, is it, does it matter? I'll tell you what my best source was over the weekend. My phone. <laughs> I have never been more happy to be away from all this hubbub. I was at a staycation with my wife for our first, technically our third slash first wedding to wedding ceremony <laughs> anniversary. Congrats, by the way. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, and I get to the hotel and I just see <laughs> Twitter has just lost its damn mind. So the best source for me was my phone because I'm just sitting back with popcorn watching the show. <laughs> um, to your point, Dan, yeah, it's, it's I'll, the, I'll speak to the only thing that I could speak on related to the Drew Tranquil aspect. And this is, this is just my opinion on the matter. It's just not dealing with any sources or anything like that. This is just me personally on the situation of him no longer being a charger. It's extremely unfortunate. Um, and it makes fans have to 
in some form or fashion relive what took place with Kaiser White one year ago. And I know what I saw from Kaiser White when that news broke. He had a very interesting statement to say to Drew in regards to his relationship going forward and what had taken place with the organization. And it is unfortunate, especially when you see the numbers. And when you see him go to a team like the Chiefs, obviously a division rival, that makes it hurt even more. And when you see a player of his caliber coming off, coming off of the year that he had, a lot of us felt like his market was going to be a hell of a lot higher than the contract that he ended up signing for. He and his agent probably thought that. So we as a fan base and people who cover the team know how vital of a player Drew Tranquil was to this team. And it's the writing was kind of on the wall when the first free agent signing of Eric Kendricks mm-hmm. came forth. I mean, at that point in time, it was pretty much evident that even with the way that the market was going at that point in time, that Drew Tranquil was not coming back. And it it really is an unfortunate thing because we've had Drew on this show. We know the type of human being that he is. We know the type of player that he has become. And let's face it, everybody, at least who covers this team, thought that he was going to get much more than the deal that he took with Kansas City because his numbers reflected that. We felt that he was worth it. And so when you see something like this happen, it not only irks you from the standpoint that he goes into a division rival, but it's it's more from a standpoint that's unfortunate for him for the way that the market broke. And that was evident from other signings around the league for people in his position. But it's it was evident from a standpoint that you felt like there has to be more. That, that's where this whole discourse comes into play. You start asking yourself, like, there has to be something more to this There's from more the standpoint this. that yeah. he would accept a deal like this. And whatever it was, whatever took place, truthfully, we will probably never know the full story. Um, I wish that the Chargers could have brought Drew Tranquil back because he played, his, he played his ass off during the duration since he has been drafted for this team. And I felt like he has been a fantastic leader, brings a lot of energy, him wearing the green dot on his helmet, I thought served extremely well. And I really thought after what took place with Kaiser White one year ago that the Chargers were not going to allow a similar situation like that to happen. So I'm I'm happy for Drew. Obviously, he's he is a stand-up person of the highest caliber and deserves anything that's the best for him. But also, as a Chargers fan, you you feel a little bit gutted because of the situation. But this is these are the down times of the NFL. It's a business, and this is when, as, as exciting as free agency could be, these are the times when free agency absolutely sucks. Is when you have to let someone walk, and even from a standpoint of somebody who wasn't necessarily chasing the big dollars that signed for something. Or at least initially was chasing the big dollars and then they're not getting it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of feelings in it, um, which I think is where I think all of the craziness happened this weekend. Um, You know, it's a cutthroat business. It's a little ruthless. um, And for whatever reason, there wasn't uh Put it this way. If the Chargers really, 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 really wanted to have him remain a Charger, they would have made it happen. If the alternative... So clearly there was some reservation for some reason. Who knows what it was? On the flip side, Chargers go out. They bring back Donald Parham. They bring back J.K. Scott. They arguably have in their current roster, tight end one and tight end two now kind of sealed up. Um, Parham certainly brings back kind of the running block, the run blocking perspective, which I think was important. I think I'm excited to see what Kellen Moore does with him. And we saw how good the special teams was last year, punt specifically. J.K. Scott was a big reason for that. 
happy to have him back. Got a pretty good little raise for himself, which I think is deserved considering how good this special teams did. Uh, we saw it since training camp. The guy can boot a mile high. And uh, I think the team schemed around that and they made it work. And they did. I think they had a top 10 punt return or punt coverage, excuse me. So both good. What we haven't seen yet, Jake, is John Johnson has not been signed by the Chargers or anyone. Um, Dalton Schultz, I know that was a hot name. I saw a potential there for the Chargers. Everyone was thinking he's going to get the bag. Turns out today, breaking news, Dalton Schultz signs a one-year up to $9 million contract. So clearly, market dried up there too. Curious to see what that cap number is, by the way. Um, yep. Dalton Schultz, at that number, let's say let's say the cap hits five million. Would you have done it? Even after bringing back Donald Parham to a reasonable deal, I probably and this is just me. You know, anybody else can have their opinions on this, but I personally wouldn't have done this. Um, now, if Gerald Everett was was no longer in this team, that's a different story. Obviously, you connect the dots and it makes all the sense in the world why this, while bringing him in would make sense, obviously, with the relationship to Kellen Moore um, for what he has done as a tight end during his time in Dallas. It gives you a very dynamic weapon for Justin Herbert in that circumstance. And I was always of the opinion that if Gerald Everett was on this team, then go out and draft a tight end and develop from there because Gerald Everett's on the last year of his deal at a very low cap hit number for you and draft, develop, and move on. If they went ahead and, as was re- as was speculated a couple months ago, that Gerald Everett could be a possible cap casualty, then that could have changed this entire narrative. And my stance on signing Dalton Schultz probably would have been elevated, and maybe the Chargers would have been more aggressive in that circumstance. But they chose to go a different way. They didn't originally put a tender on Donald Parham. They let him test the market. There was reports that he was... Uh, fielding interest from both the Patriots and the Browns that was out there. And ultimately, Chargers were able to come back to a new deal, bring him back to the fold. Now, I know from everybody's standpoint, as far as the health concerns of Donald Parham over the last two years have not been the best, but when he is healthy, he is one of the more dynamic tight ends as far as athletes goes in the league. And especially when it comes to blocking for you, he's definitely one of your better blocking tight ends that you have. And I think, Dan, the thing that we've been waiting to see for the last two years or so is these two tight end sets in the end zone. And for one reason or another, we just haven't gotten a chance to really see it all play out. I would think that in Kellen Moore's new offense that he will go to this early and often when they are in the red zone situation, take advantage of Gerald Everett and Donald Barham's skill set and hopefully be able to exploit defenses more in the end zone. Now, does this take tight end off the table I was just gonna say. for round one in the draft, as a lot of people have speculated. Or two. I'll say, I'll say it's more likely that they would go down that road in round two than it is round one now after Parham returns. Don't necessarily say that it takes it completely off the board for them pursuing it. That wouldn't be the smart thing to do. But I think that when you look at the holes that have been plugged in, so far in free agency and what you already have on the roster. I don't think the need for tight end is as As big as it was as say two weeks ago. And look, I'm totally with everybody else as far as Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, all these guys. It's an extremely impressive tight end class coming out this year in the draft. But I think now based off of the Chargers and their moves in free agency and maybe giving themselves more of a flexibility standpoint to be at 21, not necessarily pigeonholed for one guy, but now you can go BPA. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily take it completely off the board for 21, but I think the overall need for it has definitely gone down. Yeah, I think it's good for the Chargers to have that done before draft starts. Uh, Less needs going into the draft, I think, is the better uh, way to go. Um, this is a short one. Uh, no breaking news for the Chargers. So we're going to try to keep this short. Who knows? You might be hearing from us again if the Chargers decide to bring back some folks. 
Uh, there are rumors around John Johnson. We've seen Isaiah McKenzie from the Bills possibilities that are out there. There are a bunch of dudes. I can see offensive line depth being... I can still see a tight end, honestly, coming in on the cheap. Um, secondary players, along with John Johnson. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But want to do a short one, just kind of recap what we had seen so far over the weekend. Uh, some of the transactions we saw, again, Drew Tranquil out, Donald Parham in, J.K. Scott in. Um, Dalton Schultz is now a, a member of the Texans, so that's no longer an option. Um, Jake, anything else you want to tell the great friends before we get out of here and scroll Twitter and see if there's a breaking news <laughs> happening with John Johnson? Hey, you know, with, with our luck today, it's going to break at like 5 o'clock that the Chargers signed John Johnson. It's probably going to be like that. But Book hey, it. Book it. Sch- schedule, schedule constraints be damned. We still want it to get up a pod, even if it's short and even if it does not include the breaking news, we still want it to kind of get out in front of this because we did not have the weekend to do so. But other than that, Dan, we've got plenty of stuff to look forward to this coming week. Obviously, it's the next wave of free agency. We'll obviously see what the Chargers do to plug up any remaining holes, whether that's outside free agents or bring back some of their own players. And on top of that, draft content, draft content, draft content. There we go, baby. I have one of well Dan as well, but the it's uh, I'll I'll say it to this standpoint the the guest in question as it relates to the importance of this podcast comes on the show this week, and when I say importance to the podcast, it's it's one of the ones that helped us kick off our new banner many many moons ago. Mm, so. Shout out. Super excited for this. Coming up later this week, you guys don't want to miss that as we continue to trudge on, even though it seems like just molasses at this point, trying to get to April 27th. But draft's on the horizon, baby. And we're going to have plenty more of those type of contents. Dan and I are finally going to get more into our uh, top 10 at each position uh, as far as breaking some of those down, because I know we haven't gotten the best opportunity to do that since before the combine. But Excited, man. We got a lot of stuff coming up here in the next couple of weeks. A lot of stuff. A lot of excitement. A lot of things. A lot of conversation will be had. Uh, for Jake Hefter, you can find him at Jake T. Hefter, myself at Dan W. Sports. Guys, gals, thank you so much for all that you guys do, all the messages, all of the conversations you've had with us. Um, they mean a lot. I'm excited to go to work. Jake, John Johnson, 5 o'clock. Let's <laughs> see if it happens. <laughs> we'll see if I see you later. All right, man? Yeah, let's see you. <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you guys next on Chargers Unleashed.